All right, Jeep family, let's do a thing thing today. You are tuning in for another marketplace review or a how to buy a used Jeep online. If you're anything like me, I love scrolling Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, the old paper, you know, the regular classified ads as a kid, I would just, you know, thumb through them as much as possible. And so we're going to be looking through a number of used ads to see what is worth your hard earned dollar. The way this is going to work is the guys on the production side have selected three random ads. There's no rhyme or reason necessarily how they do it. I don't know what they are until we, you and I, the viewer and I are watching or looking at them together. I'm going to review that ad to see is that a good used vehicle for you or a project? I'm going to give it an arbitrary zero to five star ranking. It could be something ridiculous like 2.7578, whatever. It doesn't actually matter, but we're going to do that on the completeness of the listing, the pictures, the wording, and you know the accuracy of the ad for you, the consumer, who might be interested in buying a used vehicle. We see them all the time through our physical service facility, and we want to make sure that you're getting a good deal for your money. Additionally, we want, you might be able to learn a couple things about selling your own projects, free up some cash, and buy that next project that you don't need. After we rank them arbitrarily zero to five stars, we're then going to rank those three to say what would be the best bang for your buck. And that's purely based on my opinion and expert uh, viewership of the ad itself. So without further ado, let's rock and roll and see what the guys got for me today. 1950 Jeep Jeepster. 16,995, driven 13,940 miles, auto transmission, exterior color is black, interior color is gray. I got to tell you a little secret. I've been looking at this one because I think it's really cool, but let's do the ad together. Seller's description, one of a kind 1950 Willys with an IES, interesting, Jeepster, on a 1993 Oldsmobile Bravada all-wheel drive chassis. I'm going to read that again. On a 93 Oldsmobile Bravada. C come on now. O-M-G. You know things that we just didn't do swaps onto? We just didn't do Bravada swaps. I mean, I understand that a Bravada is just a glorified, like, S10 Blazer, but it's an Oldsmobile Bravada. It's not an S10 Blazer, but whatever. I, 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 I dig it. Old school style with all your modern convenience. Convertible top is manual with all new material. No side curtains, just as original. Garage kept in Arizona for the last 10 years, but just transported back to PA. Two scratches on the passenger rear quarter panel during transport. Leather interior for comfort and style. Great summertime Jeep, like no other, will entertain offers or trades. Uh, okay. Um, things that we could do differently in the listing. We could tell, say, who did the conversion? Uh, obviously, uh, when was the conversion done? And uh, maybe a little bit of maintenance history or something specific on either the Bravada or the, the Willys Jeeps there. But either way, uh, I got to tell you, the description gets me excited. So let's see how the pictures, uh, if the pictures do it justice. And let's see if we can pick out some things that, you know, that we can tell from from the, the listing pictures themselves. Um, I got to tell you, first picture, here's the thing. Background stuff like this distracts from the overall Jeep itself. Uh, the Jeep, from my viewpoint here, is gorgeous. So I'm excited to see more at this point. Come in. Here is a telltale uh, chassis swap. Anytime they do a new chassis, uh, I love period correct wheels. These are not. To each their own, but uh, I would have loved to have seen some period wheels or something similar on there. This has more the bravada wheel. 
but fitment <clears throat> it's not bad and it's it's pretty attractive i love when they say there's two little scratches and stuff like that because then i feel like that person is really trying to accurately uh, convey the true condition of the vehicle i think i see a little bit of rust right here on the grill and the other picture I was looking at, I really thought that that was like shadowing. Um, but at this point, I think, I think that's like a little bit of rust and I'm not sure why that would be there. So right now we've got a forward picture. We've got a side, couple side pictures. Now we got the top drop down. Uh, we've got that, uh, classically Oldsmobile bravada interior. Um, not just a car, a way of life dash, uh, bumper sticker there. And now they have the uh, the Bravada cluster in here. It has a lot to do with how the computer integration works. They put the whole Bravada interior in. I gotta be honest, not really my style. That doesn't mean that uh, that there's you know not a car collector out there who uh, you know they might not care. They might not want that originality. You're already looking at this. You're not expecting an original uh, original piece. I like uh, this here. And here, um, if you know what that is, make sure you put it in the comments, right? Put that in the comments if you know why that is there. I know uh, it doesn't really affect the Jeep, but I want to know if you know. Kind of fun piece there. Jeep looks overall clean, and the interior is fun. Am I back to? Okay, I was going to say, I thought I was, I was worried. I was back to the beginnings. This picture looks similar. Um, got a nice car in the background. Um, Definitely convertible top. Look at that nice storage piece. Got the French tail taillights. This is not an original piece. You are buying this because it's a fun hot rod, and you're going to be able to walk into AutoZone and buy a part for it off of an S10 Blazer or, again, an Oldsmobile Bravada. You're going to be able to service the driveline. And quite frankly, it should be more reliable if the conversion was done well. And we're reasonably back to the beginning. <sighs> All right, folks, if you've watched any of my other ones, I'm spending a lot of time on this one. I really think it's cool. Uh, it's because I, I want a Jeepster myself pretty bad. It's on one of my bucket list Jeeps. Um, lift the hood. Show me what's underneath. Show me what's underneath the actual chassis itself. There's some fun little pieces like there's fog lights Frenched into the factory steel bumper. Tell me about that. Tell me about the paint. When? How, how old is the paint? Was there any touch-ups done to it? Show me these two little scratches from transport. There's so many more things that uh, can be done. When you show me this gauge, uh, this interior shot, show me the gauges. Turn the key on and let the needles flop around and show me that it works. Show me the miles on it. Those are the types of things that gives me consumer confidence to reach into my, my pocketbook and strike that check or hand out that cash. Otherwise, a super cool vehicle, and I know that I'm going to struggle ranking this one later. As far as this listing is concerned, it's so-so. Good lighting, um, some other stuff going on. I would have liked to have seen more. This one I'm going to be a little harsh on. It's going to get a, a 3.185 stars. 3.185 star ranking. All right, on to the next one. Let's see what we've got. O M G. Wowzers. All right. 1990 Jeep Cherokee SE Sport Utility two door. Uh, $500. Driven 100,000 miles. 1990 Jeep Cherokee 4 0 engine. I messed with it a little bit, but didn't get to run. Frames spotless. No title. Has some sort of lift kit. $500 or best offer. Yowzers. I, yowzers. Okay, uh, so this is a go-kart. That's what this is being sold as. This is uh, not <clears throat> necessarily being sold as a vehicle. Um, we got this nice bald tire here, and we got some regular street tires on factory, factory old school wheels. Uh, much of the front end is ripped off of it. Uh, it honestly doesn't look bad. Like, it, you know, it doesn't look good, but it doesn't look bad. So, we're right into our, uh, our, our engine bay shot. I like the engine bay shot. 
Um, this tells me, it kind of confirms that this is a Renix era ignition and injection system. I'll say that again for you a little slower. A Renix era ignition and injection system. For those who know, they know. But otherwise, this is a very challenging platform to work on if you're just getting into tinkering on Jeeps. People see that the fact that it's a 4.0 engine and they associate it with the 4.0 high output of the 90s and early 2000s. This is not that. This is a different uh, configuration of electronics and fuel injection that honestly the world wasn't ready for. This was inspired by uh, European uh, technologies at the time. And quite frankly, a lot of people don't exactly understand how it works. With that said, if you're going to buy and work on one of these, you need to really understand what's going on under the hood. So I appreciate the fact that the seller has given us the opportunity to look under the hood and go, yep, that's a Renix. And I am going to go, yep, I'm moving on. But you might be like, hmm, I like pain. And so I'm going to buy this $500 go-kart to wheel in the, off in, in the woods and off-road. That's up to you. But... That's why the value of this underhood shot is here. Also, I really want to know where the rest of the fender well is over here. Why is that cut out of there? Weird. So I think it had a homebrewed snorkel on it. That's why. That's my guess. You know, not boop. It would go boop, boop on off. Um, and this is a closed cooling system. It looks like largely has been unaffected. Let's keep on cruising here. Um, yep, we're missing fenders over here, no front end stuff. Um, this looks like it was actually a two door, and they took the rear cab. And <clears throat> what in the marry your cousin situation is happening at the rear bumper? That is just old school, like that's well pipe. And look at this, look at this hitch mount, and it's just like, like butt welded, right there you know they just stuck them side by side right boop and welded it in uh is what it looks like to me i don't know if that's actually what's happening but look at that extension and we got this big pipe like what what the what and like if the rear tailgate is partially here what is back here like in the 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 bed i want to know more i i really want to know oh buddy whoo Put down the red paint. Step away from the vehicle slowly. I want to know, were they doing this mudding with those factory tires? Weird. Uh, we're back to the beginning. I just, I, I want to know so much more. So, so much more. Please, sir, may I have some more? <sighs> okay, I'm gonna have to we're gonna have to call this one. Um, this is this was not good. Um, and actually, what I can see in this picture here is this is actually the sport cluster. Um, so that was kind of a cool cluster. It would have been a nice feature to know more about why it's in there, and I'd love to know what else is going on in the interior besides the fact that it's absolutely filthy, dirty. Uh, what are what are people doing with this Jeep? Because in its current condition, this does not look um, palatable. For the average consumer. OMG. The exhaust is ran up through the tailgate, or actually through the bed, which would not have been a bed. And it is right here ish. And that is the exhaust pipe that looks like a like a like a big rig smokestack. Um, and the only thing better, and I can't quite tell whether this has a flapper. So as you give it exhaust, it flaps and pop, 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 pop. I unquestionably think that they set this thing up to, because uh, I think that that big cutout in the in the fender well was for the snorkel. I'll come back around for that here in a second. Yep, there it is. I think that this thing was meant to be buried up to the firewall. There is a reason it doesn't run. Professional observation. Because I think, I think the water line was about here on it all right folks this listing nah, we meow we meow uh you were going to give this one a 1. Uh, 1.4 1.4 definitely is where i'm comfortable putting it i want to know more about it if you really want to sell it clean it up a little bit take some different pictures show me show me this spotless frame 
Um, and tell me why is there no title? I'm not worried about buying a vehicle that's in 1990 with no title. I want you to tell me why it doesn't have a title. That's what I'm worried about. Also, uh, what have you done to try and make it run? Those types of things make it easy for me to pull out five hundo dollar bills and rock and roll. All right, let's move on to the third and final option. Oh, I got excited. I'm just looking at more pictures of it. 2000 Jeep Wrangler Sport Utility Two Door. This looks normal. When do the guys give me normal stuff? I like this. Driven 186,000 miles. Exterior color blue, interior color brown. Um, usually I, I hear it called tan, but brown is fine. <clears throat> Seller's description, 12,000 or best offer. Have matching spare and third bright light, brake light for inside tire. Has newer transmission, steering box, exhaust, cam and crank position sensors, new LED taillights, wheel flares, tires 33 inch, bumpers, Pioneer DVD, satellite radio ready navigation, new door seals, and stainless steel hardware and hinges. Well, <clears throat> it's interesting. Uh, Pioneer DVD, satellite radio ready nav. That's a mouthful. I don't know that my Wrangler needs that. But it's interesting nonetheless. It's a good-looking Jeep start, starting off. So let's see what if it's uh, if it's worth twelve thousand dollars. I just love this. Is like taking a picture in a mirror. Like, what is this person's body doing? Like, all what? How is this foot in like that? So what? What is going on here? Those are nice-looking General Grabber ATs. I like that tire. It's a good-looking Jeep. This is, uh, if you were around in the TJs, this is kind of iconically what a TJ looked like and how it should operate. Um, just, uh, we got the uh, Amazon rear bumper here. Um, says he has a full-size spare, just not on it. Got all of the stainless hinges and whatnot. Very cool. These are interesting taillights. Um... All right, so now we're getting uh, under the chassis shot, and this is the kind of stuff. This is the money shot as far as I'm concerned. Buying a Wrangler, this has got to be a priority for you. This is scaly here, but looks pretty solid. looks like somebody came in and tried to rattle can this black some. We definitely have some rust going on here, um, but not the end of the world. Decent pinion angle. Pinion seal's leaking a little bit, but again, all things to be expected with a you know, 23, going on 23-year-old Jeep. Honestly, we've seen worse, and for not a lot less money, so this is a pretty good option so far. Um, going just standard. Oh, there we are. That is a front end. That is an angry grill. Um, another Amazon bumper on the front. I, I always love the Euro clears as the turn signals. I'm here for it. And they have obviously more than appropriate fender clearance uh, with the flat extended flares. This is a clean little Jeep, a uh, nice little cruiser. Is it worth 12G? Um, I would love to see some interior pics of that brown interior. Uh, the gauge cluster going. Now, obviously, you're showing us that there's nice fresh tires. You're not, you don't have to buy tires for it. So what I can tell you from reading this, um, this is a this is an individual who has not bahad this Jeep. They're not bogging it. Um, this is a great Jeep to be your Sunday cruiser. Just a fun drop the top, go out and tool around for the weekend. Um, you know, go to the Renaissance Fair, uh, go camping maybe. Are you going to build it into a, a monster off road machine? I don't know if it's clean enough to do that. Uh, is it exactly worth the twelve thousand dollars? Mm, I'll talk about that here in a second when I rank the vehicles as our our best bang for our buck. It's going to be a tough one today, but um, but a a nice enough looking Jeep. Uh, the listing could have been more complete. Uh, obviously, I could have seen some pictures from the inside. Uh, it is the interior, the gauge cluster. You know, some some nice well lit stuff. Show me this DVD. You know, the Pioneer DVD satellite radio ready nav. Show that to me. Let me understand who's, you know, tell me about the stainless steel hardware. Is it Kentrol? Is it Amazon? Is it whatever? Um, you know, tell me more about these things. What's that has the newer transmission? Is it a Jasper? Is it a local reman? Does it have a warranty? Those are all the types of things that make a consumer 
more willing to part with their hard-earned cash to buy a project like this. Um, I really like the fact that this individual truthfully depicted the underside of their Jeep. That makes me feel better about it. You're going to want to get in there yourself before purchasing and poke around at some of these little rest spots. They're not terrible, but they're also might not be good. So you'll want to look at that and these lower control arm bushings. This overall is a pretty solid vehicle, and I don't think it's priced incredibly inappropriately. That is why the OBO is there. This listing in general is going to probably come in as our highest listing today at a 3.621. 3.621 on this particular listing. Decent enough pictures, got some good information, got a way to contact us, but not, not exactly convincing me um, of an of, of a appropriate sale. So the last moment we've been all been waiting for is what's the best bang for our buck? What's actually worthwhile for us to reach in and give up our hard earned cash? Will it be the 2000 Jeep Wrangler, uh, that we just talked about the $500 rubber is falling off the wheel, uh, no titled, you know, Chero truck, or the 1950 Willys Jeepster Oldsmobile Bravada Love Child. Oh my goodness. All right, folks, at $500, our least value for our dollar is going to be the off road toy. It is off road only. You're going to have to have a trailer. You're going to have to suck it up on there. You're going to have to understand Renix. You're going to have to bring it home and, and tinker and fiddle and play with it. Um, and at the end of the day, is it going to be the off road toy you ever dreamed of? Honestly, I don't know at this point. Nextly is going to be that 2000 Jeep Wrangler Sport Utility. It's a nice looking Jeep, um, but it's going to ask for some suspension parts here sooner than later, especially if you're really going to be using it um, at 186,000 miles. There's going to be some stuff on that chassis that needs to be addressed that's not listed here in the description. And with no further ado, the best bang for your buck is going to be the 1950 Jeep Jeepster and Oldsmobile Bravada Love Child. It's just cool. It's unique. I'm willing to bet that the the seller is able to wheel and deal a little bit on the price point. If you're looking for a classic hot rod that you can kind of get in, yeah, you're going to have to understand a little bit of what that previous person did to marry these two together. But I got to be honest with you, you can't pay somebody to build this for you at the price that it's listed at automatically the best value for your dollar. All right, Jeep family, I hope that you enjoyed this content. Make sure you like, subscribe, ring the bell so you know uh, when we have more videos to upload. Go on to the rest of our YouTube page and, you know, tool around. Figure out there's some cool stuff on there. Lots of neat content. And make sure you tell your friends. Jump on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok. Do whatever you need to do and tell them about SFJ 4x4 and the very, very cool Jeep-specific information that we have. And if you're just an auto enthusiast, we thank you for joining us. And let us know what you liked and maybe what you didn't like about this. So until next time, Jeep family, Jeep on. Yeah.